Okay, I wanted to share this dream that I had a couple days ago. Um, as you can tell by the title, it's very similar to a lot of the other dreams that God gives me. And not just me, he gives these dreams to other Christians as well. So I know that there's a message in it. Um, I have had, let's see, I've been saved for 10 years now. I was saved on Christmas Eve of 2011. So Christmas Eve this year is going to be like my 10 year anniversary, I guess, which is cool. So literally, like as soon as I was saved, I started having prophetic dreams. In the beginning, I had a lot of dreams that are this same dream that I had that I'm sharing now. Um, and I would have this particular dream very sporadically. Usually I have the dream about the raptures happening when we see two moons. Um, but it's been quite a while since I've had this particular dream. And my mind has been so completely somewhere else lately because I've been really busy trying to do some things in life that I'll explain in another video in a few weeks on my other channel. But I have not been thinking about this type of thing. So uh, I just kind of feel like this dream was a nudge from God saying... Like, I'm still showing you these dreams that I started showing you in the beginning of our relationship. Um, I just don't know what it means. And it's very strange. But I have had this dream probably five times total. And it's not just me. I have looked on YouTube and I've seen other Christians have it. Um, even my Christian friend, she's had the same dream multiple times. So in this dream, I'm outside with my family. At nighttime, it's like pitch black outside, clear sky. I mean, we could see every single star in space at like the whole sky. We had a view of the whole sky all at once. It was like I could turn around and see every star in space right, right there. Um, everything was so clear and crisp. I'm talking like <laughs> if I was the best artist in the world, I couldn't paint it. You couldn't make something this beautiful in a movie the closest thing that I can describe to what I like the visuals and the the magical awestruck feeling was kind of like in the movie Aladdin where they're on the magic carpet ride above the clouds and you can see all the stars and the moon and it just has that magical like <gasps> like take your breath away feeling that you just don't get here on earth so we could see every star I could see all of space. There was zero light pollution from anything. And next thing I know, all like peppered all over the sky in all directions was all these different moons. There were, there were all different sizes and shapes and phases of moons. So some of them were huge. Like some of them were like huge full moons. Some of them were very small like half moons, there was like medium sized crescent moons. And then with the crescents, it was like there was a huge thin sliver of a crescent. And then over here, there was a, a kind of smaller crescent moon that was a little bit uh, of a bigger sliver. So it was like all different phases, all different sizes, some huge, some small, some medium, just peppered. Like if I were to turn around in a circle, they were just randomly all over the sky I want to say there was like between 15 and 20 different ones and again it's always the same thing in these dreams just same message just a little bit different scenario but there we were just me and my family staring up in awe like our jaws were just on the ground we weren't afraid or scared at all it was a beautiful thing it was a confusing thing we weren't sure what the heck was going on Literally everything came out of nowhere. No one told us that we were going to see this. And that is a common theme in other dreams pertaining to the moon. Is that they don't tell us in the media that we're about to see what we're about to see. It just comes out of nowhere. So we're just standing there like mouth open. Looking at this gorgeous like oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. It's so it was not scary in a way that we were fearful or there was like a feeling of dread or horror or anything like that, but it was a fearful sight because it's in a way in, in the way that it, we weren't, we'd never seen that before. You know what I mean? 
like if I were to walk out my door right now and see this, I would have an actual literal heart attack because I'm not used to seeing that. I would think that all those different kind of moons would have a certain pull on the earth and like make us explode or like insane tsunamis and things like that. Um, but there was no fear when we saw it. It was just awe. That's the only word I can think of was just awe. It was just gorgeous. And we were just like staring at it like, wow, this is beautiful. And we were like taking it in and looking over here and looking over there. And I was like, where did this come from? Like, what, what's all these moons in the sky? What the heck? And then I said the same thing that I always say in the other dreams was I said, remember, it's when there's two moons, that's when Jesus catches us up in the rapture. So even though there was like 15, 20 ish random different moons popping up everywhere, it was like I reminded myself like it's when there's two moons, that's like our right then and there last second heads up. When you see that it's happening right now, like not tomorrow, not next year. It's like and I've seen that in other people's dreams as well. It's like when you see that, it's like one, two, three, rapture. It's like there's no time to spew any words out of your mouth. Like, because sometimes in the dreams, I'm like, repent, repent, blah, 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 blah. I'm like trying to get it out, but it's like, boom. Like, as soon as you see that, that's your kind of like a heads up. It's going to happen right now. So that's what I said at the end of the dream. So I don't know what the meaning of all the different moons is. There's all kind of different theories. Um, I don't know if they were like Saturn's moons. I don't know if they were just not actually moons, but they looked like it. Maybe they were just what the Bible calls um, wandering stars. I don't know if it was Wormwood, the Destroyer. I don't know if, I don't know what they were. They just looked like moons, as we know the moon to be, but there was just different ones. Like over here was a full moon, but over there was just the crescent moon, and it's huge, but over here this one's small. So I don't know if it, that is like a symbolism of um, kind of like different times, like something with time. I know there's been a lot of talk about them to, um, like stopping the change of like um, like daylight savings time. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I don't know if there's going to be some sort of absence of time. Maybe like an EMP could just throw off all the clocks type of thing. I don't know if that's some sort of symbolism saying like, you know, time was confused or thrown off with the moon, all the different moons, different shapes and sizes and different phases and just everywhere, everywhere you looked. It was confusion, but it was beautiful. It was unexpected. Like no one ever tells me in these dreams to like, hey, like, you know, go outside tonight because there's going to be all these crazy moons. It's like they don't tell us that. And I don't know if it's because they're hiding it or because they don't know. And it's just something that God is going to remove a veil from. I've had dreams in the past where chemtrails are removed. So I don't know if like part of why they're spraying the skies. And I probably just got my video deleted by saying that word. But I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if part of why they do that is to cover up something that can be seen. But at the end of the day, we have to remember, it's like God is laughing at them spraying that stuff anyway. Because at the end of the day, God has the final, he allows and disallows everything that happens. The Bible tells us that. Um, so nothing on earth or in space or whatever can happen unless it's taken to God and he gives the okay first. He has to approve everything that happens. So even if they are trying to hide something out there, God is allowing it for a reason. And yeah, in the one dream, it was like the chemtrails were just stopped. And we, we were like, oh my gosh, we can see what's behind there now. Like it, I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be like, maybe with COVID, maybe they like stop all flights or something and they can't spray up there. I don't know how it's going to work or how it's going to play out. But I have heard so many other Christians have that same dream of multiple moons in the sky. And uh, it's tied to the rapture somehow. But in this one, I was like, now remember, it's when there's two moons when the rapture happens. 
So I don't know if this is something that he was showing that we were going to see before that time. I really don't know how long we have left here. I thought I was convinced in 2012 that we were out of here. If you would have told me back then, hey, you're, we're still going to be here in 2021 with everything that's going on going on in the world right now, I would have not believed you. I would have said, you are deceived, actually. Like, I don't want to hear from you anymore because that's, <laughs> I just couldn't have believed it. And in fact, it would have absolutely broken me. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't know that. Because uh, it just, I couldn't, I, I, it would have broke me completely. But at the same time, I feel like I wasted a lot of time. I wasted a lot of things I could have done in life thinking that just because I had a dream showing me that it's going to happen in my lifetime, you know, if I don't die from being hit by a bus tomorrow, um, it doesn't mean that it's happening right now. So over the years, I've learned to adapt this very strange, weird, confusing way of thinking, this weird mindset that's very new to me ever since I got saved, um, which is completely being in the middle of on one side Jesus could come this evening and completely the same amount of belief on the other side that we could have five to ten years left that through ten years of me praying for wisdom I always say Lord give me wisdom knowledge and understanding even if it goes against anything that I believe or anybody tells me give me wisdom knowledge and understanding and the Bible actually instructs us over everything pray for those things so I do and over these 10 years in this relationship with Jesus I have learned that it's just as possible for us to leave today as it is for us to have 10 more years right now despite what the world looks like and that's something that God has taught me in this past year that I've learned. Forget what the world looks like. Forget what the news looks like. Forget what the communities look like and the hospitals and just the media and YouTube. Just completely like part that down the middle like the Red Sea and set it aside. Don't look at it. Don't focus on what things look like as the truth. He's taught me what it means to walk by faith. Because in 2020, when all of this COVID stuff started, I was like, yep, that's it. This, we're going this year for sure. I was convinced. I was convinced in 2012, but 2020 was like, you know, sealed the deal for me in my mind. I was like, there is no way we're going to have any more time left. So he's really taught me that you don't know how much time we have left here. And just because it looks like we're that close doesn't mean that we are because I've learned that God can stall off things for as long as he wants. He could stop the sun right now if he wanted to because he's done it before. And so I've learned to have that balance and it's a healthy balance and it's a balance and a mindset rooted in wisdom and not foolishness anymore because I used to be like nope I'm not gonna plan for this and I'm I'm not gonna do this in life because Jesus is coming right now because the news said so and people on YouTube and this dream that I had I've learned to not walk by what things look like I've learned to go by faith and um just the fact that I never would have believed that we had 10 more years after I got saved. That was a complete impossibility for me. And yet here we are. And I still don't know when we're leaving. And some of you guys know this. I don't think I've ever said it on here in a video. But for those of you who I do talk to off of here, you guys remember back in 2018, I had a dream that actually showed me my life. It said this you're looking at what your life looks like in the year 2022. And I said, there's absolutely no way. Mm -mm. Like this is a dream from the devil or something or my own brain or maybe I had bad pizza. There's no way we're still going to be here that long. Like in 20, this was 2018. But you guys, I prayed on that dream every single day for a straight year 
from August 2018 when I had that dream that showed me this is what your life's going to look like by the year 2022. Every single day from August 2018 to August 2019. Every day I prayed on that and I said, God, was that from you? If it was, confirm it. If it wasn't, show me the truth because I don't want to be deceived or planning for things or expecting things that are just, you know, maybe I just had a random dream and it means nothing or whatever. But I said, Lord, if you're trying to tell me something, you know, and say like, hey, like get your button gear and prepare for this because it's going to happen that I want to know. Like I want to be like Noah and operate in faith preparing things to do that. And I said, Lord, like every time I prayed, it was yes, 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 it's going to happen. And I thought that's impossible. It can't happen. And I said, Lord, for that to happen, then this, this, and this X, Y, and Z has to happen. And it's just out of the realm of possibilities for us. Every single thing has pretty much every single thing has checked off up until this point. And you guys, here we are. Can you believe we're at the end of 2021? We're it's October 15th right now. 2021. We are on the ver the horizon. I can see 2022. And again, um, also when I had that dream to begin with, I said, well, Lord, maybe you're saying that this is what my life or me and my husband's life is going to look like in the year 2022 if you don't come back first. So I was like thinking, you know, this is what to expect and how things are going to play out if we aren't raptured first. And I just always thought, yep, yep, yep. Every single week was the rapture. And it's like, here we are already, like we're about to enter into that time frame of things happening. And you guys, the reason I've been so busy in my mind has been other places and not thinking about, you know, the end time stuff too much. I mean, obviously like every day it crosses my mind, but I'm just focusing on certain other, certain other things is because God has like put into motion every single thing, but except for, I think one, I think there's just like one thing that hasn't happened that I'm like, mm, that's not going to happen. It's impossible. But that's what I've said about everything else up until this point. And it's like the doors were just opened and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe this is happening. And there was a certain time frame for it. Like when I say I prayed every single day for a year, I, I prayed every day for a year and I didn't have a dream every single day saying, yep, 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 yep. It was, you know, over time, the consistency of it was yes. And oftentimes, some of the confirming dreams showed me further details of things, like, because I was asking, I was like, okay, Lord, if you're telling me that this impossibility is going to happen in my life, then could you show me this certain detail or this? You don't have to show me all of it, but could you just answer me just certain things like, so that there were like road signs along the way to show me that it was going to happen. And every time he did. And I was like, wow. And I, w I wish I could. I don't I want to save it all for another video until it's official. Because it's just going to be an amazing um, testimony. But for those of you who I talk to off of here, you know, you've known about this this whole time. And you know that those certain steps are, have been put before me. I didn't even really set out to do them myself because, um, the Lord kicked my butt into gear. Literally it was nine 11 or it was, um, the night of September 10th, I believe it was. Um, he gave me a dream showing me literally in the process of doing something particular that we are actually doing right now. And I I'm sorry to be vague, but it's one of those things where I kind of have to be, but when it's all official here in just a few weeks, I will definitely share it if you're even interested in that. But he showed me in the dream when I wasn't even thinking about it, setting down and signing, you know, certain paperwork to do this. And so the next day I was like, mm, that's impossible. Let me just look into it. The next day, like when I looked into it, it was like perfect for things to play out. And so... Yeah, it all kind of started on like September 11th, September 10th. Um, yeah, September 11th was when we officially started doing what we're setting out to do, which I'm like, oh, maybe that's what we saw in that dream that showed me my life next year. It Like the dream said, this is everything will have already be taken place by next next summer, actually. 
And like I even, I think my, the very last prayer that I prayed in August of 2019, I gave it a year. I think the very last prayer that I prayed was asking him to show me. I said, Lord, you don't have to show me an exact date on a calendar because I know you don't always operate like that. And sometimes maybe he does. I said, you know, I'm not going to ask if you don't want to for a specific date, but could you show me a certain month? And that last dream I had, literally a calendar came into my vision and it was getting closer and closer and closer until it was right in front of my face, suspended in air. And like my, my eyeballs visioned and zeroed in to the third week of August. And just the way that things are playing out right now, I'm like kind of like going from summer of 2022 backtracking. And I'm like, wow, this, the timeline is perfect for that. So I'm kind of like, okay, Lord, like I... I believed you, yet I was like, mm, that's impossible. But like I said, he, he's taught me to, to walk in faith. And you guys, right now, there are so many people in my ear right now in life around me, like my actual life, of people telling me, that's not going to happen. That's impossible. Lower your expectations. All these different, you know, voices of the Satan, the liar, telling me. And I'm just like, Lord you've taught me like those, those voices of people around me telling me these things anymore. It doesn't get me down anymore. It actually makes me more excited because I'm like, this is the example exactly of what God meant to walk by faith, not by sight. When things are impossible with me and with people and circumstances in the world around me, that's the perfect recipe for God to get glory, to step in, to make that possible. That's why the Bible says what's impossible with man is possible with God. And if you continue consistently to ask him for your heart's desire, he will give that to you. And boy, have I been, you know, full force, full steam ahead on this path to getting there. Because I believe, like I really believe that it's going to happen. We're just in those final steps to getting there I'm like okay Lord I believe you even though it it literally just going by what I can see and things that have been put in front of me I'm like um if I was to have my old way of thinking or earthly way of thinking I would be like okay I'm just gonna give up because it literally is impossible there's just no way it's not gonna happen I don't think like that anymore I literally tell God I say Lord I laugh in the face of everything now so if I like welcome it like come up to me and tell me that x y and z is impossible for me right now in this world that we live in and all these different circumstances because that gives me like more fuel to take that and present it before before Jesus and say look Lord like I just kind of visualize me wrapping that bad news up or that kind of curse or that negative whatever somebody said I kind of envision myself I close my eyes and imagine me like wrapping that up into like a box a present and I stand before Jesus and I hand it to him as like the almost physical like faith is the evidence of things not seen so that's kind of like my physical evidence of like me giving him in faith like lord this is what so and so said this is what it looks like there's every obstacle in my way blocking me from getting what my heart's our heart's desire is and what you showed me so in faith i'm showing you like when the bible says that Noah believed God. He didn't just believe in his brain and say, yep, mm -hmm, okay, I agree with that. So Noah was saved. God didn't save him for that reason. Noah got up, he got up off his butt and did something about it physically in action to prove that he believed God. He didn't just sit there and say, oh, okay, it's going to rain. There's going to be a flood. I believe you. And then that's what made him righteous. No, he believed God because he did something to show that he believed no matter, you know, even though the entire earth had not even seen rain before, he believed God. So he got up and he did something about it. And that's the exact same faith and belief that I have in what God's showing me because it goes against the grain of everything that my eyeballs are telling me and showing me that can't work. That's just, you know, you're just going to have to, you know, um, accept it. This is just, you know, it's not the time. No, mm -mm, I don't even entertain those ideas anymore because I know and believe what God has shown me 
And it just kind of lights a fire under my butt to present Jesus with more and more and more. Like, Jesus, this is what they said. This is how impossible it is on earth and in this these circumstances that I'm facing right now. And I'm just blocked and I'm there's obstacles and I can't get over it, Lord. But I know I don't have to because I believe what you said. So it's in your hands now to unlock and open those doors. And I completely believe it's going to happen. Does that 100,000% necessarily mean that we are still physically not going to be raptured by next year? No, because it could still be true that, you know, I feel God gives us things and visions to expect in life. You know, because why not? You can't just think, well, the rapture is going to happen, so I'm not going to plan for anything. Uh, he could still rapture us up today. And by all means, that would be greater than anything that I'm praying for right now. So by all means, like, you know, hey, I, I would be happy to be wrong. But that's just what the dream showed me in 2018. And I've no, I don't think I've ever shared that on here before because I just would constantly, even from Christians, I would just get slammed for that. And I'm like, we don't know. We don't know how long we have. But they would say, well, haven't you looked at the news lately? You know, they're trying to force the V and the M-O-B is, is so close. And I'm like, yeah, it is by our eyes. But we don't know what God is allowing and disallowing and how long he could stall things out. I mean, yes, he could do A and yes, he could do B. I don't know. So I'm just trying to go with what he's shown me personally. And if... You know, we never get to that point because we're raptured first, then great. I mean, that's even better. So, um, I didn't really ex expect to explain all of that, but I guess it was needed. Maybe somebody needed to hear that. I spent 10 years of my life, my saved life, not planning for things in my life because I thought every day was the day that we were out of here. And he's taught me this balance of, yes, believe every day is our day to go believe every single day that I could die of someone could murder me I could fall off a cliff I could get shot I could get hit by a bus whatever and also at the same time believe that I could live to be 80 years old I just don't know how I don't understand God's timing and the Bible tells us that we don't we don't understand his ways and his timing but his timing is perfect so he, that's why he said occupy until I come he didn't say twiddle your thumbs on the couch and board up your windows you know we are even still with everything that's going on in the world we are still to be out there serving people showing the love of jesus like some people are like i'm not having christmas i'm not having thanksgiving i'm not going to visit my family i'm just going to sit here and keep myself away from everybody because they might get me sick or whatever it is if you genuinely have a relationship with jesus and you have a clear conscience with him and you're just you're loving God and loving others as yourself the best that you can he's got you and he's going to protect you through everything going on in the world right now he's going to provide for you like there's Christians around me that are like oh my gosh like food shortages and you know the ships out at sea that you know all this kind of stuff and I, I just I've learned to literally I laugh at it it doesn't affect me at all anymore. It doesn't instill any kind of fear, panic, worry. I literally don't care about what's going on in the world right now as far as I don't allow it to dictate me anymore. I try to operate in wisdom and do my best. You know, I, if I go out, I'll wash my hands. Sometimes I'll wear a mask. You know, don't stick my fingers in my mouth or whatever. You know, I just, common sense and balance and godly wisdom, you guys. That's all I can say. So, but I know that Jesus knows me. And I know him. We have a relationship. I seek him every day. He shows me things and shares things with me. And I have truly learned what it means when he said to operate and live by faith. Forget what everything looks like and what people are saying. We don't live... A physical just a physical life yes we're physical beings and we're in the world we aren't of it though so we have God's promises to grasp onto to be the guiding light for our lives as corny as that sounds like if someone presents me with oh you know blah 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 bad news like you know you can't do this and whatever I get to take that to Jesus and 
I really believe that it pleases him when I do that because he can see that no longer do I get so frustrated that I just give up in life and I just cry and I get depressed and I just, all, all those dark thoughts. And I don't do that anymore because I said, God, I don't believe that your word returns to you void. Just like the Bible said, God's word will not return to him void. God said it, he meant it. And I said, okay, Lord, I believe that. Now, I expect you to do this. And I, when I say that to him, when I say, I expect you to do this, it's not in a condescending, like, you better do what I want and give me what I want type of way. I think he wants us to expect him to do things for us because that shows that same faith that Noah had, that he believed God. So, you know, he got up off his butt and, you know, built the ark and did things. You know, God said, build it by these dimensions and use this wood and this. God believed that was going to happen what God said. So he did something about it exactly as God led him along the way to do it. And that's the same faith and belief that I have through everything going on in my life right now. And it, it brings you so much peace because you learn that you're not ruled by the media and the news and what Satan's doing through the world. It's all a lie and smoke screen. Yes, we're still existing in that kind of world, but you don't have to operate in fear and paranoia and shutting everybody out. I've just kind of learned to laugh in the face of all of it and look straight ahead at Jesus. No matter how dark things look around me or how impossible it is to achieve this desire and this dream that my husband have and to achieve the things that God showed me in this dream. It doesn't matter how impossible it is for me. That's why he's there. He's there to make it possible because he gets the glory for it. And that that is how you have a relationship with him. That is how you follow him. You know, he shows you something and you believe it and you act on it. I don't just say, well, God, mm, sorry, but, you know, the world kind of overrides what you're telling me because it looks like, and it looks like, I don't care what it looks like anymore because what things look like, you know, don't believe your eyes, you know. So anyway, uh, hopefully this uploads because it's super long. I guess I just needed to get that off my chest. Um, but please don't be discouraged by any of this as well. But if I know we're all so tired, doesn't even explain how done I am with life anymore. That was a word tired, exhausted, done. Those were words like years ago. I'm so beyond that now so deeply that there isn't an actual English word to explain how Ugh, I just, uh, that's the only thing I can say is I just want to go home. I hate this world. I hate the world system, but I'm still here for a reason. And God still wants to do things in my life. He still wants to bless me. He still wants to have a relationship with me. He still wants me to do things and not sit around and hide from the world. People out there need us. Um, so anyways, I just don't know if we're going to be here only till next week or five more years, ten more years. I don't know. But I'm just trying to live that balanced, godly, wise mindset of rapture could be today. I could die today or life could go on for a couple more years and God could just kind of, you know, part the seas to the side and say, not yet, not yet. You know, Satan can only push the envelope as far as God allows it. And yes, it looks like we're literally right there because we can see what they're trying to do and how far they're pushing things further and further every day. But at the end of the day, God gets to say on, yes, you can do that or no, not yet or whatever. So you, you have to, you have to learn to live your life like that or you're going to waste your life. You're going to disobey God by not occupying until he comes. So that's what I'm just trying to busy myself doing is occupying, seeking him for what we need to do. And I am so excited. I'm very stressed, but um, because this whole process of what we're going through is extremely stressful. It's, it's a lot um, going into it, but at 
it's very rewarding. It's very exciting. I, we are so close. I can taste it. Um, I've actually been purchasing things as an act of faith. I look at God. I look up and I say, see here, God, like I will literally physically pick up the item, hold it up to the sky and say, look, God, you can see, you know, I spent very much needed money that we need in life right now on this particular item in belief that you are going to do what you told me you were going to do. And so I don't worry about anything. I just totally trust that everything's just going to slide right into place just the way that he planned it to. So it's very exciting to allow myself to, just like faith is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence is something physical. It's when I purchase X, Y, and Z, it's saying, hey, here's the physical um, object or an action that I do something an action I take or whatever to show the things that are not yet seen and that God honors that he honors our faith so I'm very excited when not if when this is official in just uh, a few weeks I'm going to make a video about it on my other channel it's called Holly's Coffee Break that's where I upload videos of like my personal life and just whatever I'm doing, just occupying until he comes because I know some of you guys are interested in that kind of content. I love to see what you guys are doing. I would like to see what other people I'm subscribed to on here, other Christians are doing in their life. I don't really know a lot about you guys at all. I feel like people only ever want to focus on, oh my gosh, a dream or a vision or the rapture or whatever. And it's like, we don't really know each other. Like, how is that fellowship? But at the same time, I have learned to kind of build a wall on here and protect myself against getting like too close or showing or sharing too much because I've been hurt from it. Even though I just wake up every day with the most pure intentions anybody could ever have, it just blows up in my face every time. So I've learned to be very selective and wise about what I share on here and who I talk to and everything like that. But I do have a separate channel where I do show like if I go to the lake or just, you know, what I do in my life, who I am. And I would like to see more of you guys, that side of your life. I mean, I get a lot of people are very uncomfortable with sharing things on YouTube because we're probably all being watched. But I mean, if you are in Jesus, then he is your protection. You know, Satan likes to threaten people with lies all the time. Like, oh my gosh, you can't do anything. You can't move out of your corner because I'm going to completely annihilate your life and you have no freedom. I'm going to show up your, at your door and yank you out of your house and ship you off to a camp and things like that. And people just forget to have faith and trust in Jesus to be our protector and our provider and everything like that. But I don't see a whole lot of like personal type videos. Like, um, like I like vlogs. I'm subscribed to a lot of other different types of channels on here. Cause I like to see what people actually do when they get up off the couch and don't just hold themselves in the house all day. So I like to show that stuff too. So if you guys are interested in that, in a few weeks when everything's official, over on my other channel, I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. I'm going to show the physical fruition of the dream that I had that started with a little tiny mustard seed of a dream in 2018. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, I have been taking little snippets, like little clips here and there, documenting the whole process along the way just to kind of show the process and to have it for myself to look back on as to kind of say like, look, this all started with something God showed me in a dream that I prayed on consistently in faith. The Bible says pray without ceasing. I did not cease for a straight year on that dream because it was almost like my brain was saying, mm, no, impossible. Nope. God, is this really you? And every time it was yes, yes, yes. Not every day. You know, every once in a while, it was a dream saying yes and showing me more and showing me more. And I would ask certain specific details and I was shown certain specific details. So I'm living my life in expectation of, of actually, I'm expecting to see these things. So that's what it means to live in faith, to operate and 
do things and move in action with the evidence of the things that you don't see yet. So that way, when you look at it from God's eyes, like I try to envision him looking down at me and he's like, okay, I showed her this. She prayed on it and asked me and I confirmed it over and over and over in her faith. I will honor it because she's showing me that she, she's, t I've taken the steps and put into order as much as I can on my end of things, believing God and going further with it and further. And here we are. So this dream has showed me what my life would be like. Everything would be completed by next year. And here we are. We're only just a couple months away from 2022. And things are already in order. And like I said, there's like one puzzle piece that's missing that I don't understand. It would kind of have to, it, not kind of, it would 100,000 million percent have to be a God thing. Just drop down on me perfectly because I don't see, there's no way that I in my own power can make it happen. So that's just like the only thing that I'm not seeing anywhere. But at the same time, that one piece in the dream is something that could very well just happen overnight like that not of my own doing extremely vague I hate when people are vague with stuff like that but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I want to do like a whole video later just showing this is what I was talking about and it it is real now and I don't want to share it anyway because I don't want to hear all the comments of oh no we're leaving tomorrow the rapture's happening tomorrow don't you know that that kind of thing is I don't want to hear it because even though it doesn't get me down, it's just a distraction. I just, the way that I deal with those things now is just kind of like, I just picture as myself as kind of like a bulldozer, just bulldozing like snow away and rocks and dirt. Just like, get out of my way. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to push you out of the way. I don't need to hear that. And I'm just trying to keep my eyes focused and locked right on Jesus to get me through this whole process because it's been extremely stressful. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of change and it gets very overwhelming at times. Sometimes I can, I had one moment where I literally snapped and I had a full on panic attack that disrupted my, my digestive system is terrible anyway. But when you get upset and Operating in negative emotions and you're stressed, it, it um, can disrupt your digestion. For a week, I just was like, oh my gosh, my body went haywire because of that panic attack. So I've learned, I got that out of my system. I don't have them anymore because ever since then, he's taught me everything that I'm stressing out about and all this craziness and chaos is taking a lot to get there. It's a good thing. These are good things to be stressed out about. They're good things that are keeping me busy. And just knowing that it's something good, that these are good things and I'm gr I should be grateful to be even ha stressed out about these things. It's like I can breathe. I'm like, okay, I don't need to stress out in a bad way to where I'm overwhelmed with negative emotions because I all I have to do is literally just throw it into God's hands and say, you showed me this, you deal with it for now because I can't. And so it's, I'm very excited to be, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to be a few more weeks now, but expect a video over on my other channel here in about probably the video would come out in about three weeks to a month or so. Just pray that, um, I know everything's going to work out the way God showed me. Just pray that it's in a, a very, I, my heart's desire is for it to fall into place at a very specific time frame. It's kind of like, hey God, this might be a lot to ask, but I'm asking anyway because I wouldn't ask you if I didn't believe that you could do it. It's just one of those things, you know, we are to make our requests known to God. He wants us to petition him for things. You know, he gets joy and glory out of, you know, oh, you think I can't do that? Like, I'll show you type of thing. He says in the Bible that he can give us blessings so much that they would just overflow. Like, we wouldn't have room for them. So, I'm allowing him to do that. And that says a lot because I'm not somebody that ever believed that good things could happen to me. So, 
and nat by nature and naturally in and of myself they can't they won't i just but it doesn't matter because god overrides that i have him to trust for all of those things and he's put things into order and despite everyone in my ear around me just shutting me down and trying to lower my expectations and break me and everything it's just like mumbling in my ear is it's not having an effect on me anymore and this is only something you guys that is from God only he could teach me that these aren't things of myself because that's not the type of person that I am so he's he's taught me over the past year to have more confidence and you guys might remember about a year ago I think he told me he literally I heard him say you need to have more confidence because basically I was a doormat and I had no spine at all whatsoever I was allowing everyone in my life to guilt trip me and accuse me falsely and treat me terribly and take advantage of me and basically he was like um you know my people can't be like that like you have got to stand up for yourself and it's it wasn't in a way of like you need to repay them for evil and you need to this and that no there is a godly way to be confident and to stand up for yourself and set boundaries and that is what he's taught me. And that is something that only could come from him. Because that is not in my natural personality. I just, by nature, I am very shy. I am weak. Naturally, I am. I tend to just want to be a people pleaser. And I've allowed, I think my childhood of, childhood of abuse turned me into a doormat. And I just let people put more and more pile more crap on me every day and God was just basically telling me like you can't be like that anymore like and he's really taught me the godly way to operate in confidence and to set how to set boundaries and just the wisdom and, and how to do it and it's just something that only could come from him so that's all on him not me and I seek him to help me do that every day because it's just not in my personality but it's it's weird because even though by nature that's not how I am it's not who I am I don't have the ability to be that confident person that can stand up for myself or I I would literally people would falsely accuse me of things and I couldn't stand up for myself I would just cave but it's so weird how even though that's how I am at the same time that's how I'm not because it's like um, I guess like the spirit realm side, how God changes you, he can change your personality. He can mold you to be more like him. It's like that is, I guess, if you had spiritual eyes looking at the physical body, is kind of like overlaid over top of my physical by nature personality. And it comes out. It, it kind of speaks to like how when a baby is born, like, say you have uh, the baby is born with the same traits as his father. Like, he has this personality or mannerisms of his father physically. When that's the same idea or principle spiritually, it's like those attributes and traits of Jesus really do come through me spiritually in a way that just isn't there by nature. If that makes any sense at all, I just think that's so cool. And I think people kind of look at me sometimes like, wow, like how, like that's not you. Like, and they don't like it. They don't like that I've learned. Uh, I think they almost want me to lash out and act in a like carnal confidence way of like, I'll show you or I'm going to get you back or blah, blah, blah. I'm going to wish evil on you. That is not how I think or act or pray or wish at all. Literally, I literally pray and wish the best for people around me, even the ones that hurt me all the time. I There is not one iota of, oh, Lord, please let something mean or bad happen to them. That's not at all how it is. And I think the fact that it is so pure and genuine between me and him that he blesses me for that. So I think people around me want me just to kind of, uh, they want me to lash out and act out in a certain way because they want to be like, oh, you think you're a Christian, huh? Well, you're not supposed to do that or that's so whatever. So I think that the fact that they're watching the way that I do it in a godly 
fashion. It's just so sick, honestly, and evil how they they want you to trip up or something. So I just hate that disposition that people have. I see it a lot mostly in women. There's this disposition that they have, and I've talked about this before, of like a cattiness or, mm, um, you know, blah, 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 blah. Or they'll like side eye you and kind of look you up and down and just kind of find a reason to hate you or find nitpick things. I hate that in people because I don't have that. I don't know of all the evil things that have happened to me in my life. I've been abused in every possible way you can think of pretty much. Despite all of that, I still don't have that whatever that certain disposition is that these women have against me. It's like they hate me for no reason. And they'll just even when they say, like, your intentions are so pure, they'll say that to me. But they'll even say that to me in a way that's, like, a snide remark. Like, I've, I've gotten that before. Like, oh, you're just so, so pure intentions and your heart is just so pure. Like, in a way that I should be ashamed of that. And it's almost like you're not a real woman until you kind of look down your nose at everybody. It's like there's this competition thing going on. I don't have that. I'm not interested in that. I don't have time for that. It just, it must be extremely taxing physically, emotionally, mentally. And when those type of personalities attack me, I've always in the past allowed them to get me down, but not anymore. And I think they don't like it. And God has taught me to have a back a backbone but a godly one. So don't ever think that if God is teaching you to have confidence and to stand up for yourself, that he's telling you that you need to, you know, pay them back. Because he says, you know, payback is mine. Don't render evil for evil because God can see in your heart and mind, if you're really thinking, like you might say, oh, you know, bless your heart. But inside your heart, you're thinking, oh, gosh, I just hope something really bad happens to them to bring them down and bring me up. He can sense that. He sees that. And he's not going to bless that. So he, he knows your intentions. This whole thing is all about our hearts, you guys. It's about your heart towards God, your conscience towards God. Love God. Love others. Mean it. Be genuine about it. And don't worry about anything else. Those are the main principles. Love God, love others. Sometimes like people will freak out because they're like, oh my God, it was Saturday the Sabbath or Sunday the Sabbath and I accidentally mowed the grass. And it's like people are so focused on trying to keep, they're keeping the law. And I'm like, forget that. Like God knows, like your whole relationship with Jesus is between you, your heart and mind and conscience and soul and spirit and his. Nobody else. Love covers a multitude of sin. If it's something that you, you're not setting out to purposely do. If you're purposely setting out to sin and whatever. God sees that. But if, you know, just love God, love others. Focus on that. Do it with a, mean it when you do it. When you go out to help someone or feed the homeless or this or that, don't take pictures of it. Don't tell everybody on YouTube that you did it. Don't post on Facebook, look at me, look at me. You have, it has to be genuine and God's going to see if you're fake or not. So anyway, I feel like I could go on all day about this because I'm very passionate about it. So I guess this was a dream video turned into kind of like a preaching. I don't know. Hopefully somebody got something out of this. So I'm going to get off here. I have to run to the bank. So, all right, bye.